Hello everybody, I'm High Treason. And if you're seeing this, well then I guess my repairs have uh, probably worked. I sure hope so, still a, a few minor issues, seem to be software related for the most part. The, I've had a time of it making this one because the Intensity Pro seems to be on the blink. I'm, I'm hoping it's uh, just because this machine's overclocked and it doesn't like the PCI bus. Uh, if that's the case, then I'll just put it back at stock speed. Uh, I'm only at 3.7 something, usually at 3.8 gigahertz. So, yeah, this is the old workstation. This is my old Pentium D, a slight upgrade. We're at 950 now. And, well, it kicks some serious ass. Uh, it's really a lot better than the Core 2. Uh, I don't know if I displayed that benchmark already, but <laughs> don't know what's wrong with the Core 2. Don't care to find out. Don't ever want to use one again. So, no way am I going to mess with that thing long enough to find out. Mess, lo won't mess with it long enough to drop it in the trash, perhaps. But there, this thing's running, and... Yeah, I suppose I should make a start on this video. So, what we're going to look at today is uh, only a little thing, because I need to get back into this. I'm rusty as, as can be, basically. And I'm sure it could be worse. And we're going to look at a little sound card. It's the Yamaha YMF724. Uh, it's not actually the model of the sound card. I don't know what the model of the sound card was. I've still got the box and stuff somewhere. I've had it since new. But I don't know what company made it or what model they sold it as. I can't remember. Yamaha just make the chip. And well, you know, I could sit here and explain it on camera, but what's the point? Let's just go and look at the thing properly. I mean, that's how we do stuff around here, right? So the YMF724, what, what it actually is the thing, it's an audio chip made by Yamaha in the 1990s for the PC uh, using the PCI bus. Yamaha are of course the company which made the OPL chips for the AdLib and the Sound Blaster cards. They also made the audio chip in the Mega Drive and Neo Geo and tons of arcade boards like the Midway Y unit with total carnage. Maybe I'll look at that game someday because it does kick ass. They're a bit of a strange company though, they're one of them big companies and they make all kinds of things. They primarily seem to make audio gear and musical instruments and things related to that. They, they might include guitars and synthesizers like my DX100 or the MU90R. But they also make motorcycles and who only knows what else. They were listed as making furniture at one point so yeah by now they could be making space shuttles or something. Yamaha did produce their own sound cards at one point, but the 724 I have was made by some obscure company in China as far as I'm aware, and I don't want to dig my SW1000 out to show you what Yamaha's own boards look like. You could easily find one on the internet if you want to see a picture. I don't like that card anyway. The board doesn't look too remarkable on this one though, the integration seems rather good, and there aren't many components around the chip, all things considered. Uh, the chip itself has a very small pin pitch, so yeah, that would back up good integration, I suppose. There's more than enough headers on it. There's ones for CD-ROMs, uh, there's a video header, which I guess is probably for an MPEG decoder or some such, or common at the time. Uh, an auxiliary header, which is a given on any decent sound card, and a PC speaker header. There's also an SP diff out on the back, which actually does work with everything, unlike the All64. And interestingly on the card there's this mono out header, I think probably you could hook a little speaker up inside the computer, a bit like with the Pro Audio Spectrum, we might have to have a go at that, wonder how powerful the amp is on this card, but it isn't 4 watts like it is on that thing. An interesting header is this one here, the SD link header, it connects to the motherboard in your computer. In short, PCI does not have some of the IRQ and DMA signals which ISA cards relied upon. Sound Blaster being one of those cards. As such, the card will work fine without this connected to anything, but it's useful for maintaining compatibility with DOS games if you want that, and most people did at the time. As a result, installing one of these cards is simple enough, but you're probably going to want to connect that wire if your motherboard provides a header. They're easy enough to make out of an old ribbon cable if you didn't get one with your card. 
My Pentium 2 has one of them headers on the motherboard, and we'll probably look at this machine another day. I think we will. It's just not really finished yet. Oh, cool. I'll be able to skip over the sound card in that video. The card has drivers from anything from DOS up to Windows XP, really. The drives are good, and the DOS ones are certainly usable, but Windows 9X is really where the card comes into its own, and that's about right for a PCI card in this era. I mean, it's what you'd expect. It's what it was made for. The software is going to install a control panel applet here. It allows you to tamper with the card's parameters a little bit. Just turn everything on on this tab. Don't know why they're off by default on mine. Then look at the DOS box page. There's a strange MIDI option there. Hmm. External or XG, huh? Well, we already know XG is Yamaha's extension to general MIDI, so what would that do? We'll find out soon. It's probably worth noting that despite the fact it has its own applet, everything is done through the standard Windows interface as well, so if you don't like playing with Yamaha's applet, other than the extended features, resources and which synth you use in Windows can all be set through multimedia and device manager, as per usual. I hate cards that lock this stuff down, so Yamaha's done a good job here. Under Windows, the card's fairly basic. It does what you'd expect it to do at any rate. I've never had any issue with it. It supports direct sound, and that's about all you needed in Windows 98 to have a decent sound card. I like it though because of its DOS capabilities, it's what I use it for the most. You can run all the DOS games on it, like Duke Nukem 2, and have sound come through SP Diff, which is what you're hearing. That's very nice. I am back. <laughs> the FM quality is alright as well. So. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. A lot of cards really weren't getting this right at the time. Not even ones by Creative themselves, so... It, this is doing okay. I'm happy with that. In later DOS games like Duke 3D, though, it's where it really shines. The, the Sound Blaster compatibility is a must, but... Now, because we selected XG in that little applet, we can set the MIDI card to external. The software will now redirect any output to that external MIDI card to the internal XG synthesizer instead for the music. That synthesizer is essentially like an MU-90R with its balls cut off. Who wants, uh... <clears throat> it sounds good and clean, but it's not as good as a real MU module, and it, it lacks a few features, but it's certainly usable. It murders the sound canvas to death anyway. No, 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 wait, I didn't mean that, no, no, no! I forgot I'm not allowed to have opinions, am I? Yeah, well, you know what, screw it. I don't think the sound canvas is that great. Sure, you kind of have to have one because of the amount of stuff that utilised it, but... As a musician, which I can't call myself because I can't read music, but as a, a, a wannabe who perks a keyboard around, is it, it? No, the MRs were miles better, especially a real MU module compared to a real sound canvas module. It kicks its ass. Just that guitar amp alone. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what we want. Can't do that on a bloody sound canvas, can we? What a bunch of losers. Yeah, and what, what about some of the other cables? What if we play random midis with them? Now setting one of these up correctly you can make some really cool noises with it. They aren't too hard to program either, but of course they're not as good as the real module. They, they do lack quite a few features versus the real thing, but it's a nice touch. Yeah, the uh, 
problem is though that there wasn't really any software which supported this card. I mean there was but there's not a lot. Mine came with some really good software to use the card with which I couldn't really showcase here because the Pentium 2 was throwing a fit. But it's pretty useful but it's pretty average as well. Uh, which I quite like. It's got a light footprint. It doesn't kill the machine like that shit Realtek liked packing. Uh, the one game I have that sports it is Demon Star with music and sound effects by Bobby Prince. That's right, the same guy from Duke Nukem and Doom and Commander Keen and everything. That guy's awesome, but I don't really think he was using the card to its fullest here, and that's a shame. The only thing I've really seen that supports these properly is professional editing software like Cakewalk, and that sucks. But this should have been Yamaha's generation. It, Roland got very, very lucky with that sound canvas, their cheap Toys R Us fucking box with half the polyphony and less patches and non-existent effects now enough. And you want my opinion? Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. Roland didn't deserve to get anywhere with that thing in the first place. It was no good from day one. And finally something comes out to beat it, and as usual, everybody just ignores it, which seems to be the thing with this industry and the people who make the most noise who are into this stuff. Of course, most people are decent, but they don't seem to shout as loud for some reason. I, I get tired of this stuff. In summary then, the card's reliable, it sounds good. Whilst it isn't very elaborate, it doesn't really need to be. I can't really see why you would need to make it any more complicated. It has enough features to make it a good solution for a Pentium 2 or Pentium 3 PC, and if you really wanted to, you could disable the Sound Blaster support and use a real card, but in all honesty, the compatibility is actually really good. It's better than some of the cards creative were making at the time, to be honest. The only real application I can think where you would want to disable it and install a real Sound Blaster is if you were ripping OSTs, you could put in an older Sound Blaster with a 3812 FM chip on it, and hook it straight into this card and then record from the SP diff out. Because the two cards would be operating in the same machine, you would bypass any ground loop and much of the interference that you might get on the analog side of the cabling, as the cable would then be very, very short. It would only have to travel a few inches. So that's, that's something I might do with it, but otherwise I'm actually really happy with the DOS capabilities it already has. So there you go then, it's a really good card, actually. Uh, the one thing I never mentioned in there is they're actually quite cheap. Uh, I bought that one when it was new and they were getting a little older by then, you know, it was, it was getting phased out. They, they, they were going out of fashion, but, you know, they, they didn't really matter. They were still a pretty capable card. Windows 98 was still the major operating system. Um, so it was a perfectly valid choice. It was only about £15. I never actually saw one going for more than 25 30 quid. So maybe they were more when they first came out, but nowadays they don't really cost anything. You find them all over the internet for sale. So if you've got a Pentium 2 or a Pentium 3, and if you've got that SB link header on it, then these might be a good choice. Uh, you know, if you don't want a sound blaster for some reason. Uh, I mean, I, I usually do go with an old 64 in machine from this era, even used to have one in there, but they're all broke except my gold for some reason. I think the capacitors are gone, so yeah, I'll repair them, but I don't think I'll put one back in there. I actually think this card sounds better, and it's quite nice having just this one SP diff cable. But yeah, the battery's run out now, and bloody hell, I've been talking for 19 minutes. I don't care, I'll, I'll talk for 19 minutes, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'm my treason, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon with that little portable system, or that Pentium 2, that with the sound card was in, so you've already seen a bit of that thing, but yeah, maybe we'll do the portable next, the little dinky one, because that, that thing's awesome. I can't wait to show you that actually, that's a fantastic piece of equipment and I've not actually seen another one of the exact same model but I've seen very very similar. V Westlife has a very very similar one.